guys, we uh, run the usual embargo for 10.30 this evening, please. Um, any questions in Spanish, we'll take before that embargo. Just see the show of hands, so we know where we're taking the microphones. Thank you. Hello, Pep. Um, having been to see Liverpool play against Stoke the other night, um, what did you make of them as a side? And do you think that Liverpool are genuine title contenders this year? Uh, good morning, yes. It's a contender, yeah, definitely. It was a good game. And in terms of their style and what they did and what have you, were you impressed? Did you think that they were a good side? No, I saw many, many... I was lucky to, to play against Jurgen Klopp, so I think we know each other quite well. And, uh, and I saw Liverpool this year many times. But it was my day off, my family was not here. And I decided to take a car, thank you Liverpool for inviting me for their tickets. And, uh, and I saw the game, that's all. Uh, hello Pep, uh, Sam Crabtree, Premier League Productions. Um, Sergio Aguero, available to you again after the four matches that, that he's missed. So, how ready is he to return and how perfect maybe is this match for him to return to? No, he's ready, he came back good from Argentina. Uh, yeah, finally came back after seven games ban, well, three games plus four. Uh, and, uh, and we are happy he's back. Hello, Pep. Uh, everybody remembers Liverpool dominating in the 70s and 80s, United in the 90s and early in millennium. Do you think City can do that or is it too hard now with all the money and the power that the clubs have around the Premier League? No, I think it's an inappropriate question that. So this is a historic club, but it's in your club in in, in terms of the the targets. And of course, City cannot compare right now what the Liverpool did and United did in the last 30, 40 years. So step by step, that is the best way to to get him better. Hi, hi, Pep. Could I just ask about the the injuries, please, to um, Leroy Sane, John Stones, Vincent Company? How are they, please? Uh, John is much, much better. Vincent and Leroy, I think they are not be available to play. Hi, Pat. At this stage of the season, how much do you put on the fact that it is second place against third place, that both are trailing Chelsea, three title contenders? Just how crucial at this stage is it? But there are six teams fighting for uh, for the title, for the especially for the first for position for the next Champions League qualification. So I saw the contenders uh, really tough teams. Uh, so it will be a good road, a good fight until the end of the season. Next question, guys. Take him in Spanish. Bona tarda, Pep, Dani Gil de Mundo Deportivo. T'has enfrontat vuit vegades amb Jürgen Klopp, quatre victòries per cadascú amb resultats bastant contundents. Esperes demà en fil un partit més ajustat? I d'altra banda, després de les sessions d'Angelinho i de Mafeo, quin paper creus que tindrà Aleix García aquest segon tram de temporada? Gràcies i feliç any. Gràcies igualment. Encara que no li donem molts minuts, confio molt en l'Eix. És un jugador que té moltes ganes de donar-li minuts perquè és un jugador que tenim... Penso que ens pot ajudar molt la posició de mig centre. La primera part de la pregunta era? No, no sé com serà el partit demà. Intueixo que si no em diu la seva intensitat, en fil és el seu jugador número 12. El que ha passat, el passat és el passat. So there were two questions. First one, um, you play against Jurgen Klopp eight times in Germany, uh, always with overwhelming scores. Do you expect a more tight match this time? I don't know what will happen tomorrow. Uh, we have to equal their intensity, of course. Anfield is going to play a, a big role for them, but what happened in the past uh, stays in the past. And second question, uh, with the departures of uh, Pablo Maffeo and Angelino, do you think, uh, or what do you think will be the role of Alex Garcia in the rest of the season? I trust Alex Garcia a lot. Um, uh, I want to give him more minutes uh, because I think he can help us a lot in the position of midfielder. 
Hola Pep, aquí Antonio Fuentes para Deportes 4. Se ha publicado en España eh, que el City está muy interesado en Isco. Quería saber si es real ese interés y si puede venir en enero. Ni idea. So it's been published today in the Spanish media about an interest of Manchester City in Isco Alarcón. Is it true? Uh, would you like to have him here in, in January? I have no idea. Okay, guys, we're on the embargo, please, for 10.30 this evening. Hi, Pep. You're probably aware that uh, it's been a very difficult ground for City over the years. They haven't won there since 2003, Anfield this is. And I think it's only once in 35 years. Does that record surprise you? And do you think you've got a team there to go and um, to go and end that record and win there? So the results on City in Anfield? City at, at Anfield. I yeah. think it's one win in 35 years. Yeah, that, uh, that means how difficult it is for Manchester City to go there. So we want to try to change that, uh, that statistics. And uh, it's always difficult there. So I feel like it's a few times one team can dominate and control the game during 90 minutes for many, many reasons, uh, especially for, uh, for, uh, for a team like everybody is new, for the coach, the players, and meet each other. Uh, but it's a game, so it's, it's tough, not just tough for Manchester City, for all the teams in the world. I mean, I think you played there once yourself for Barcelona and yeah. lost. Do, do you remember anything about that? Was it, was it a daunting place? No, it was a semi-final for the UEFA Cup before. And uh, we draw nil nil in Barcelona and we lost to one nil from penalty in Anfield. Yeah, I remember that. Pep, how important do you see uh, Sergio Aguero to your team? You, you've actually done quite well without him while he's been suspended. The first thing I can say, we made quite well without him. So we make a good performance. Uh, uh, except Leicester, after four minutes to nil, uh, we make a quite good result, seven games without him. But of course, it's so important for us. So it's, uh, can you imagine all the teams in the Premier League? He's Better striker, he's a, uh, he's almost his best player. Don't play in nine games, so it will be tough for them. Will be tough for us, but we are there. So we are just one point down from Liverpool in front for the other teams. And tomorrow we finish the first first leg, and hopefully the second leg, Sergio can play all the games. Uh, Pep, um, Raheem Sterling is uh, obviously certain to get a, a hostile. Um reaction and reception at Anfield because of the way he left the club. Um, he had a difficult time when he went there last season and he came off after the first half. How much better equipped do you think he is to handle going back there now? Because he is a player who's going to attract that kind of attention from the home fans and hmm. they will target him. Do, will you speak to him and do you feel he's ready to handle that now? Yeah, I spoke to him, but not about that. About uh, his last two performances. and. Uh, Always it's difficult when the crowd uh, is not in your side on the whistle, so always it's not, uh, not easy, but uh, it's part of his grow. So, and uh, to become a better player, so we're going to try to handle the situation, but obviously he'll start from himself, focusing on what he has to do. That is the only way he can handle that. Pep, can you talk about how Raheem's improved this season? What, what kind of aspects of his game have impressed you most? I think it's a question for him what he has improved, what he has learned. What I saw is in the first part of the season, he was our key, key player in front. Uh, one month ago, I was a little bit down. Those two or three games, he didn't... He wasn't uh, aggressive like, like, like in the first part of the season. And the last two or three games he came back, we, we need that. We need that his one against ones and his aggressivity to, to attack in with the ball or without the ball, the back four. Uh, of course, he has talent. He has to read a little bit. Sometimes when he has to pay one or two touches, in one he has to go. Sometimes when he has to dribbling past the ball, sometimes when he has passed the ball, has to dribbling. But that is the part of the process of the age that uh, Rush has. So, but uh, we are the light. I'm the light uh, about uh, what he has done until now, because he's a fighter. And, uh, and for example, the last two games was decisive in the, in the second goal against Arsenal. He's a one against one in the penalty in the whole city when the game was tough. So, and we cannot forget, he's so, so young. 
and uh, and of course all the players need a process to get him better but I am we are I am I, we are so so happy like uh, he has done Hi Ben do you have a date for when Vincent will return and does he need to get back and prove to you that he can be, he can be included in your Champions League squad yeah, I would like to tell you tomorrow I would like but uh I think it's much, much, much better every day. The people tell me that, but it's not really fit. And of course, we're going to to decide uh, with the day the list about uh, the players for the for the new Champions League. Of course, we're going to evaluate absolutely everything. Is he mentally okay? Because you, you mentioned that there was a mental issue. He's tough. He's tough, but it's he's tough because the situation is not easy for him. So I can always do. To analyze what happened in the play, I tried to be in in their heads. And when one guy was two years, a lot, a lot of injuries, and uh, and then most of them unlucky situations because what happened against Crystal Palace, I think so. So it was unlucky situation. Uh, uh, must be tough for for the players. But I would like that he can feel we are there, awaiting him, and uh, hopefully he come back because. In the central defender positions, we are not uh, too much players, too many players. Hola, soy Carlu. Como jugador siempre habías dicho que no jugar un campo como Anfield era algo especial. Ahora como entrenador también ves eso, eso cambia. No, para para mí en Inglaterra es buena. A jugar aquesta lliga, i aquesta lliga significa no només Anfield, però també és Anfield. Uh, bueno, veurem com va. Sí, és, és maco jugar, com va ser jugar al Trafford, com White Hart Lane, que no havia estat mai. Hi ha moltes coses noves en aquest any per mi i que les intento assimilar bé. Depèn de tant. Depèn de com vagi el partit. Uh. It's always been told that uh, going to Anfield as a player is a special. It's also special for you as a manager going to Anfield. So it was one of the good things about coming here, play uh, in this league, uh, not only in Anfield, but in many other grounds. It is nice, but not only Anfield Road, also Old Trafford, Whitehall Lane, many other grounds in the Premier League. Uh, there's a lot of new things for me, and going to Anf Anfield is one of them. Pep, uh, Jurgen Klopp famously described his style of football as being like heavy metal music. And then I think he said as well, Arsene Wenger was like classical. In, in, in that sense, how would you describe your style? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> in, a, in a musical sense. I don't know. And well, uh, uh, how did your style differ from his? In, I mean, because obviously you're, you're, you're both coaches who play at a high intensity, uh, a high level, and, and both enjoy possession football. Do, do you feel your styles are very similar? Or do you feel Were you again? Pardon? Were you again? No, yeah. no, I don't think so. But I like a lot the, the way they play, but uh, I like a lot because for the spectators, for the because in three four seconds they are attacking. Maybe it's the the best the best manager in the world, the best manager who create the teams attacking the back four with this amount of players, with this how uh, intensity with the ball without the ball. So it's not easy to do that, and they attack there. White sometimes with uh, Klein, with Milner, but especially they attack inside, inside, and they, they do especially really well. I think there are not another team in the world attacking so many players inside with this. Uh, uh, I learned a lot in, in, in Germany. Uh, the first time I, I played against them in Super Cup, I was new there, so wow. It was a, a good lesson for me in that game. And we lost 4 2, Super Cup, yeah. And after in the league, uh, I learned a lot. I learned to control a little bit that situation, but it's not easy. It's not easy. So when when he speaks about his football heavy metal, I understand completely because it's not Paul. He's so aggressive in that sense. So for the spectator and and uh, and the fans, it's really really good, really good. Okay. So just one more, Stanley. I was just going to say, in light of that, given how dangerous. Is it one of those games where your defenders have to be even more focused and concentrated because their attacking players have that ability to score, score goals and make some second? Uh, yeah, but I think every, every team has his uh, his detail, their details, and of course uh, Liverpool for the quality of the people in front, for the way they play, for the aggressivity. It's not. I think Anfield is 
something is about the tactics, but when you play against the teams like Jurgen Klopp, is the tactics is so important, but there are other issues, other points is important as well, and you have to to equal or, or to be at that at, at that level. Uh, but of course, they they have a specific way to attack and. And you have to control in the specific way they press, and they have to try to look for our strong points of his weakness points to attack them. With the sort of style that he has, Pep, how hard is it to keep up that style, that pressure over a whole season in this country? Again, so yeah, it's so tough for me. Yeah, so tough for the Premier League to handle that, but I will learn. But for, yeah, but for him. He has for for Jurgen? Yes, yeah. They have this very uh, full-on style. How hard is it to maintain that kind of energy and intensity over a whole season here? Uh, Liverpool. Yes. Yeah, it's a good question for him. So I don't know. But to play one game a week without Europe is easier. When you play three games a week, so it's more complicated. But uh, it's a question for him because he knows exactly how. But I think he's able to do that because. Uh, He's a huge motivator, and uh, and I think uh, 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 I think what I saw in in, uh, in in what what he did in 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 Borussia in, in Dortmund with Borussia Dortmund, especially in the first year when we wanted to Bundesliga Meisterschaft, uh, and especially the first year we were there. So so he's able, of course, to to maintain that level uh, for one season. Of course that. Hi, Pep. In terms of both Liverpool and City's title chances, is this a game that perhaps the loser would have to forget about the winning the title this season, do you think? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, from my point of view, I want to fight until the end and of the end of my, my uh, last chance. So uh, when I was a football player, I was in a position 12 points behind Real Madrid and at the end I was Champions League. And one day I was in winter time, 12 points in front and I had to travel to Madrid with just four points in front and they should win there to be champions. If not, we have not won the Champions League. So, uh, so sports, football, all the sports, you have to be there until the end. Now it happened, especially for yourself. Uh, but of course, tomorrow it's like it's not like a final. It's not a final, but like a final. So it's an important game for both teams and uh, for the other as well. And hopefully we can make a good performance. Okay, two guys. Okay, thank you.